Hi, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions, and welcome to the Polaris XL Build Project, Part 10. It came back on. Okay, now I'm going to fit the elevators on. Let's see what we got here. Make sure there's a gap. Yep. I want a little gap at each end. Not much. You might have to trim off the end if it rubs at all. Okay, now to start out, since this is laminated, I'm just going to go ahead and use packing tape because it sticks really good to the lamination. And just going to leave a little gap there. Put a small piece of packing tape at one end. Okay, I'm going to put another piece of tape here. That just gives me an idea how make sure we got plenty of throw there before we lock it down. I think this would could use a little more gap right here. Just use a little more gap. There. Okay, now we can put a piece all the way across here. That should be about it. Just enough to do the job. Got a little bit of wrinkle there. I think I can pull it out though. Like I say, the lamination gives me a little bit of leeway to work with it. There we go. Now we can flip it over. And I'll put a little bit on the bottom too, right along here. Get over near where the, at the end over here, is where the control horn is going to go. So I'm probably going to have to have some tape right there for sure. All right, take that down, and then we'll just wrap it around, making sure we make contact with the other tape that's in that crack. Pushing it in with my fingernail. Make sure it makes contact. Fold it under. And there it is. So it's still very flexible, but it's also very strong. And it can be removed because the uh, tape can be pulled off if you try hard enough. The lamination will let it release. I like it. Okay, so the rudder and both ailerons are now hinged. I also have previously hinged the elevator. So now all the control surfaces are ready to have the, the control horns and control rods installed. So now I'm going to get ready to glue in the control horn with some of this foam tack. And I've already applied some foam tack to it. Just letting it tack up a little bit. And I also coated this uh, plywood. It came with a model with some super glue. Some of this medium super glue. And uh, that just kind of strengthens the wood a little bit. I'd already previously painted it to black, as you saw earlier in the video. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. Now for the other control surfaces, I may use some nylon control horns, but for the rudder, I think this will do just fine. The one that came with the kit. Okay, so I'll just put that in there and let it dry. So for the elevators, I'm using some of these plastic control horns that have a little piece or plate on the bottom that clips on and then I just CA it to make sure it won't come loose. Here's what they look like right here. And they come in a pack right here. There they are right there. Uh, <clears throat> not sure where I got them. Probably Hobby King. But that's the numbers. Okay, so first I just put a little bit of the foam tack in the crack before I stick the horn in 
and then I'm going to put this plate on the bottom one of those plates right there flips onto the bottom and then I'm just going to CA it with some of this medium CA for the elevator I'm going to use one of these nylon horns that have uh, two screws to go through to a plate and there's the plate on the top side and the horn on the bottom side so that ought to be very strong so I've got those two screws straddling this carbon spar right here and that adds extra reinforcement now the reason I didn't put it over here was because I needed it further out if you look here my servo is actually on the outside rather than being on the inside like the directions call for so, so since mine's on the outside and sticks further out I had to move the control horn out further so it lines up right there so that ought to be pretty good pretty close to it okay getting ready to do the control rod for the rudder servo they provide these little plastic tubes and some heat shrink so what I do is just uh, put the tube up against the heat shrink so there's a little heat shrink on each side and then cut it off right here because the ends have to be heat shrinked around the rod later and then you slide the rod and the tube up in there so this little plastic tube is up inside that heat shrink and the rod is going through it and we can use some of this super lube synthetic grease to grease it later on I think I got that at Harbor Freight now I've already put the Z-bend on the end here. You can see that and I used a Z-bend tool to do that. This is a Z-bend tool. And you just stick the wire in it and then close it and it makes a Z-bend. Okay, so to put the hole through the fuselage, you kind of look at where the horn is right here on the rudder. And then just shove the wire through there at about this height shove it through the foam up to the servo also lining up to the control rod just got to do it very carefully okay and you can use uh, like a piece of carbon fiber to make that hole too that's actually what I did I put carbon fiber through first because it's a little stiffer and doesn't bend so I put that through first and then I got something this is a barbecue skewer about the same size as the heat shrink and just poke that through. Then to finally finish it off I put the heat shrink over the barbecue skewer and poke, poke the heat shrink through to make sure it would fit. Okay and then you just take one of these and little plastic cylinders and push it up inside the heat shrink get it in about the middle Okay, put the wire in, like that, and then you can take a heat gun and just melt the ends of this heat shrink so it closes around the wire. I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be back. Okay, so there's one end of it right there where I heated it and shrinked it down so it fits around the wire. I think before I do the other end, I'm going to put a little grease on the wire and put it up in there just to get it greased. And uh, then I'll go ahead and shrink the other end. Let's see where the wire is going to be. So it's going to be about like this. So the grease needs to go about in this area. So here's a little bit of grease. Let's put some grease on there. It doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to get it on there. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to put it back in the tube and shrink it up. Now if you're going to put some on this side, you can too. Let's do that. That's pretty good. I'm going to push the heat shrink through the hole like that. So we got it. And now we're going to have to take the servo horn off and put the wire on there. And then we can go around this 
with a little foam tack. Just go around the outside of this tube with a little foam tack to stop any leaks. So I took the servo horn off, loosened that screw, took it off, put the uh, Z-bin through the servo horn on the second hole, which is what I chose to use, and put it back on, put the screw in. And now I'm going to use some foam tack here just to seal around this section right here on the heat shrink tubing. Put a little here and a little on the inside just to make sure it doesn't slip. So that's about it. So while the glue is drying here on the heat shrink, I went ahead and taped the wire to the rudder control horn right here. That just keeps the wire bent in and keeps this in place while it's drying. So everything will be pretty well lined up. Here is the side view and you can see at what level I have the wire above the wing right there. So it comes out even with the servo and it's horizontal right across. So for the aileron servo, I've cut a piece of the top plate and glued it down here. Put some grooves in it. And then I've just got the uh, sleeves provided in the kit that I melted onto here. Just heat shrink them on. Uh, they're set in the grooves here and I'm gluing them down. So that's what it looks like so far. And then the rods uh, just come down from the sleeves down here to the control horns right here. And I'll just have a little fastener right here to hold the wire to the control horn. And then the top plate will slide up against that. And I'll have to put some grooves under the top plate for it to fit right in there. But that's the plan anyway, so far. Take your plate.